this this is hard for me today. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's the name of the Lord. Because I've been preaching since 1996. Mm -hmm. 1996. Started preaching on a little island called Okinawa, Japan. And since that time, there have been two times in my life that I said, God, I don't want to do this no more. Mm. Can, can I be real? Because every preacher goes through this, they just don't talk about it. Amen. Amen. I said two times in my life. First time I went through the divorce, I said, I don't want to do this no more. I'm tired. Second time is this week. Because I understand sometimes life will hit you with some disappointments and some things that you're going to have to recover from. Amen. Amen. And I, 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 I want to speak start by just, I'm going to preach. I ain't going to preach. I ain't quit. Amen. 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 I thought about giving up, but I haven't quit. Amen. So I am going to preach. But before I preach, I want to testify. All right. All right. It's all right. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people, some people may know, but a lot of people don't know. Uh, Everybody go through things. And, and, you know, I'm going to share this. Two and a half years ago, me and my wife, we shut down our ministry up in Columbia, and we was moving to Texas. We moved, we were planning to go to Texas, and as we preparing, as we planning, as we talking to different people, we organizing, we planning, we're going to move to Texas. Three weeks, what, three months later, my father-in-law passed away. And while we dealing with his death, we decide, okay, that happened, we're still gonna go on, we're gonna move to Texas. I'm trying to give y'all the backdrop of where I'm at today. Amen. We're gonna move to Texas. We move to Texas, we get to Texas, two weeks after we get there, my brother-in-law passed away. So we come back for his funeral, we go back to Texas, a week after, we buried him and my mother-in-law get hit with cancer. Right? We go back to Texas and we decide, we pray about it, we decide to come back to South Carolina. We come back to South Carolina about a month after getting there, my sister get hit with cancer. After that, we come back, we're here, we're, we're doing the will of God. Um, I think last year I applied for about five oh. churches. Right? First church before I did benediction seemed like they sent me a letter saying, We don't want you. <laughs> I said, Wow, okay. But the other four, we've been going back and forth, back and forth. And I, I want to say this while I'm going preaching at these churches, we have a daughter that comes home. From college pregnant. We almost lose her. While she's in the hospital, we almost lose my father in the hospital in Nashville. And you know, we don't talk about this all the time. Because just because somebody carrying something well don't mean that it's not heavy. So so I'm, I'm leaving one hospital, going to the next hospital. My brother has to drive my parents back from Nashville. I take the bus to Atlanta and drive them home. At the same time, I got a daughter in the hospital. Then she have the child, and the child um, is in NICU for five months. And we're going back and forth, and, and I'm preaching, and I'm teaching, and I'm doing this, and everywhere I go, church say no. And then... I'm going to share this with y'all. Church told me no, but then a month later called me and said we picked the wrong guy. Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm just trying to show you where I'm at before I get started because it's going to make a lot of sense. So I go through all of this and, and I know I'm missing some stuff. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But this is just the stuff that I'm remembering off the top of my head. So, so you go through this, 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 and I get to the point on, on Tuesday morning, I woke up and said, God, I don't want to do this no more. But then I realized that people aren't attracted to your wins, they're attracted to your wounds. Wow. And if, if, if we are going to really do the will of God, then we have to be willing to be wounded just like he was being wounded. Right. And, 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 the, and the thing that, that hit me is people tell you, people tell you, they say, you know, I got, I got a couple of preachers that are confidants to me. And, and they tell you, man, uh, well, you know it ain't the will of God, but that don't make it feel no better. And well, you know, y'all know how I feel to be rejected. Everybody that had a girl that they wanted to, you know, and the girl said no, a guy, you know, everybody know how I feel to be rejected. But but it don't make it feel any better. And you have to process that thing and get over it. And you know, today I'm gonna to talk about how to deal with your losing season. Because we, we always talk about our wins. We we're in a we in a society, you know, and and and, and I posted on Facebook the other day, I said, I, I don't know where I'll be. If I played in a time where they gave me a trophy, even though I lost. Like we do, we set our kids up for failure because just because they participate, we give them a trophy. But trophy don't mean that you won no more. And I asked myself, I said, now, now how do I handle my losing season? We talk about, we say about it's my winning season and all this. And, and while I'm talking, y'all get the book of Job. Get the book, book of Job, first chapter. But, 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 but we talk about this thing, we say, it's my winning season, we got the victory, but what happens when we lose? What happens when God says no? How do we handle those times when, when God is saying, you know what, I, I, I got you in a place where you're going to take loss after loss after loss after loss after loss after loss, and you keep asking yourself, God, why me? Why me, God? Why I got to take the loss? God, why, why I can't take a win? God, I just need one good Anybody in here just need one good win? One good win. I don't need a lot of good wins. All I need is just one good win. You know, but, but, but I've been taking loss after loss after loss after loss, and I'm telling myself, God, why me? Look, look at the book of Job, the first chapter, the 13th verse. Because I want to show you something because, you know, I, I feel kind of like I'm in a Job moment right now. And it says, now there was a day when his sons and daughter was eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And they came a messengers to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkey was feeding beside them. And the Sabines fell upon them and took them, right? And struck them down, and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. I, I want to stop right there because the enemy will always leave somebody to tell your story. The, the, the enemy will always leave you somebody who who gonna tell you what you went through. He could have killed everybody, but he left that one person because that one person could come back and tell everybody else what was going on in your life. Look, look at what it says now. It says, while he was yet speaking. Hold up now. I ain't even processed what just happened yet. I done lost all my servants, and I, I'm not even processed what just happened yet. It says, while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, the fire fell upon, uh, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep. And the servants consumed them, and I alone escaped to tell you. Well, somebody else get left to tell your story. And then it said, while he was yet speaking, two things just hit him back to back. He didn't have time to heal from the first one yet, and the second thing already happened. Here comes the second thing. He ain't, he ain't healed from that yet, and here, here comes the third thing. 
while he was just speaking, there came, there, there came another and said, the Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you. Mm -hmm. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, your sons and daughters was eating and drinking in the oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came from the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone escaped to tell you. Mm. And the Bible said, Then Job arose and tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked, did I, uh, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all Job day, he, he did not sin or charge God with wrong. Mm. How do you handle your losing season? The first thing we realize about this, and I didn't read it, but it says the sons of God came to present himself, themselves to God, and Satan came with them. You mean to tell me that Satan can be where the sons of God gather? Mm. So, so what you're telling me is that when we come to church and we gather, Satan can come. Wow. Where the sons of God are, where we come together collectively, that Satan can show up mm -hmm. in the midst of us. And when Satan came, he said, now, God didn't worry about the sons of God. He began to talk to Satan. And what God said to Satan is, he said, Satan, where you been going? Satan said, I've been going to and fro. In other words, he said, now, I've been doing what I do. And I ain't been getting no resistance. And God said, have you Consider my servant Job. What do you do when God suggests you to say? Y'all don't like this type of preacher. But but what do you do when God says, Have you considered my servant Jamal? He is a man who walked upright. Have you considered him? How do you handle the losing seasons? Because it, 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 it wasn't Satan that brought up your name. It was God that brought up your name to Satan. And he said, have your way with him. How do you handle it when God said, have your way with him? God. But, but Satan noticed something. He said, hold up now, God. Everybody knows you got a hedge of protection around you. In other words, I considered him, but I couldn't get to him. Right. Y'all don't know when to shot. Because Satan considered some of y'all, but he couldn't get to you. Why? Right? Because God put a hedge of protection around you. Thank you, Lord. And because God put a hedge of protection around you, when Satan tried, he got to the hedge and couldn't go no further. Remove the hedge and he'll curse you to your face. Wow. And God said, okay, I'll remove the hedge, but don't touch his body. That let us know that when Satan comes against you, he can only go so far. He can only go so far. And then God said, now when he removed the hedge, all this hell broke loose in your life. And I looked at it and I'm like, Satan ain't really attacked Job yet. He just removed the hedge. We can't handle if God removed the hedge. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't with me. Because if, if, if you got a hedge around you and God removed the hedge and this happens, just imagine what would happen if God said, Go ahead, don't have your way with him. 
God said, I'm only going to remove the heads. And if I remove the heads, all of this happened to them. Just think of God saying, have your way. Four things that, that Job did that we can learn something from today. Because a lot of times when, when, when we are going through a losing season, we, we, we try to forget about God. The first thing we do is we stay home from worship. I'm alright about it. I, I, uh, God ain't moving in my life anyway. I may as well stay home. Can, 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 can we be real today? Because you know how we do. I, I, I may as well stay home because God ain't moving in my life anyway. I, I'm taking loss after loss after loss and, and, and I'm still praying to God and God ain't moving so I'm just going to stay home to worship. But that's not what Job did. The first thing Job did is he continued to worship God. And when you're going through your losing season, you got to continue to come in the house of God. You got to continue to lift up your hands. You got to continue to lift up your hands. Oh, you can't to me. You got to continue to yes. praise Him yes. and worship Him. Yes. You can't give up. Continue to praise Him. He continued to praise God. Yes. He said, I, I, I came in the world with nothing. I can leave with nothing. I don't care. He can take everything away, but I'm going to praise God. See, see, we got to learn how to praise him even when we don't feel like it. And even when we downtrodden, when we come into the house of God, we still got to lift up our hands. We still got to leap with joy. We still got to praise his name. Why? Because he's still God. See, yeah. Because he, Job got uh, uh, from the place where he was praising God for stuff. Mm. See, see, when we praise God for stuff, when the stuff is taken away, we stop praising God. See. But when we realize that God, if you don't ever do another thing for hey. me, you already hey, did more than enough. Hey. So God, when I come to your house, I'm going to praise you like never before. I'm going to worship you like never before. I'm going to say thank you for what you did for me. He, Joe, he, he, he kept praising God. He said, now, I, I, I know something. That even though God done took my babies, I'm going to praise him. Even though I done lost all my money, I'm going to praise him. Even though I, I, I know that they said friends came to the house and just begin to look at them. And for years I looked at that scripture and I said, friends come to your house and I think they stayed for like 10 days. And they looked at them and didn't say a word. And I used to dog to you guys out. I said, why would you go to somebody's house and don't say a word? But then when I started having some losses, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need you to say a word. That's right. I just need you to be here. That's right. Is there anybody that just needs somebody to be there for me? I don't need you telling me that this scripture said this. I know the word of God. I, I studied the word of God. I don't need that right now. Only thing I need is you to just be there. They were doing good. It was there. And then one of them opened their mouth and start blaming Job for what he was going through. Time is best to just be quiet. No, 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 no. When, when, when y'all going through, oh, they must have did something. Y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah, know how we do. Oh, that's they, the they must have did something. That's the mindset. They, that, that's what they did. You read the second chapter, that's what they did. Those, those friends that came to the house, you, you must have did something. What you do, Joe, that nobody don't know about? Uh, For all this to come on you, something had you had to do something wrong. But could it just be my turn? Uh, could it just be that God is trying to teach somebody else something through my life? Uh, second thing, second thing. And I don't need to get out of here. Second thing is this. You got to trust the process. But you need to know the processor. All right. Too many people 
yell, trust the process. But how can I trust the process if, if I don't know the processor? Because knowing the processor will make trusting the process a whole lot easier. Amen. Because you know that God has always, God is in the feet. Yes. God haven't taken any losses. Yes. Even on Calvary, where we thought there was a loss, three days later he came he up. Got up. Trust the process. I, I, I learned I, I, I shouldn't really be trusting the process, but I need to put my trust in the processor because I know, like 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 he did Jeremiah when he told him go down to the potter's house, and, and, and the potter had his foot on the wheel. I know that God knows how much I can take. He know how fast to spend me to get me where He want me to be. Anybody in here ever had God and you were sitting on the potter's wheel and God was spinning you round and round and round? Know the process. Trust the processor, but know the processor. He said, don't you slay me. Yet would I trust him. Yes. And, and, and can you trust him even though you're going through? Can you trust him even though you're being slayed? I'm not talking about the type of slave that y'all women be talking about. Oh, that girl, y'all here is slave. No, 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 I ain't talking about that. What I'm talking about is when you're being slave, that means that you feel like you're being crucified yourself. But you got the nerve to trust him even through your cross. Hallelujah. It is. He said, don't be slave me. Yet will I trust him. How the hell are you losing season? First thing you got to do, continue to worship God. The second thing you got to do, trust the process, but know the process. Third thing you got to do, he said, but he knows the way that I take. That when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. You got to know that what you're going through is working for your good. Yeah. All your hurt, all your disappointments, I am in tears that you cry. You got to know that it's working for your good. Job said that I will come from as pure gold. That means that pure gold. When you find gold, it don't look like your watches and, 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 and your wedding bands and things like that. When you find pure gold, it got dirt all over it. It just look like a, just any old regular rock. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put the pure gold in fire. But we don't like to go through nothing. How can he make us pure if we don't if we're not willing to go through the fire? So he got to put us in some fire to get the impurities out. And what happened is when they put it, when they put the gold in the fire, the impurities rise to the top. Yeah. And guess what they do? Scrape it off. And they burn it some more. And more impurities come up. They scrape it off. How many things come up when God allows things to happen in your life? Yeah. What he's trying to do is get rid of some stuff out of your life. And he's trying to get rid of that stuff out of your life. And while he's trying, every time it come up, he want to take it away. But what we do, we reach up and grab it and hold on to it. He's trying to make you pure like gold. That's why he got you in the fire. And we keep trying to go against what God is trying to do in our life. Know that he's making us better. And we know that all things work together. Yes. For the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. I know that I'm called according to God's purpose, so I know that I gotta be willing to take the good with the bad. Yes. We like to be blessed, but we don't like to be broken. Yes. The Bible said when they, when they brought uh, uh, the, the little boy had, uh, had two loaves, I mean five loaves and two fish. Mm -hmm. And when they brought them to him, the Bible said he blessed them and then he broke them. We like to be blessed, but we don't like to be broken. Mm -hmm. Because to be broken, what he's trying to do is just break you so you can be, uh, have more capacity to meet, reach more people. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't reach a lot of people if we haven't been broken. Glory, glory. Let me move on. The last thing, the last thing, the first thing was 
Continue to worship God. The second thing is trust the process, but know the processor. The third thing is know he's, he's making us better. And the last thing is you got to learn how to pray for somebody else. This is a big because a lot of times we, we keep asking God for stuff for ourselves. But how many of us know that there comes a time when you're going to have to pray for somebody else? The Bible says that when Job began to pray for his friends, that the Lord returned his fortune towards Job. And the Bible said that he gave them double for his trouble. Yeah. They don't say double for his trouble, but it says portion of stuff. Yeah. So, so what, what you got to understand that when I begin to pray for somebody else, God will begin to heal me. He will begin to deliver me. Yeah. He will begin to do things in my life that have never been done before. Yeah. Why? Because I've got an unselfish prayer. I don't want nothing for myself, but I want everything for you. Can somebody look at your neighbor and say, I ain't praying for me, but I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God do something for you. I'm praying that God release you. I'm praying that God set you up. I'm praying that God bless you. I don't need nothing for me, but I need everything for you. Yes, yes, God. See, we got to learn how to shout out when somebody else deliver. Yes. We got to learn how to shout out when somebody else miracle. Yes. We got to learn how to shout out when somebody else joy. We got to learn how to shout out when somebody else peace. We got to learn how to shout out when somebody else bless. We got to learn how to shout out when somebody else increase. It ain't about me, but it's more about God. I got to learn how to praise for you. Yes. I got to learn how to praise for you. I, I, I'm not going to praise him for my blessing, but I'm going to praise him for what he's doing in your life. I'm not going to praise him for, for me, but I got to praise him for what he's doing in somebody else's life. For if I praise him for what he's doing in somebody else's life, then God will bless me. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that we are just a reference on God's resume. Mm. We are just a reference on God's resume. He allow us to go through so we can testify about him. Mm. So my point is, if you need somebody to know that he's a healer, you don't have to ask nobody, you can ask me. If you want somebody who knows that he's the provider? You can ask me. Yes. If somebody wants to know that he'll fight your battles, you can ask me. Yes. If somebody want to know whether he'll quit, make your enemies your crystal, ask me. Ask me. If somebody want to know what will he give you joy for your sorrow? Just ask me. Yes. You don't have to, if you want to know whether he's able, you don't have to ask Isaac. You don't have to ask Jacob. You don't have to ask Moses. You don't have to ask Paul. You don't have to ask Silas. You don't have to ask Ruth. You don't have to ask the Hippomim. You don't have to ask Esther. You don't have to ask Mary. All the thing you got to do is ask me. Ask I can me. testify. Ask me. I can testify ask. that he is ask. the God that will be a bridge over trouble water. He is a God that will be bread when you're hungry. There's a God that will be water when you're thirsty. Hallelujah. I'm a testimony. You ain't got to ask no Bible character. Ask me. I'm a testimony. Is there anybody in here who when your life is a testimony? Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Here's the thing. Hallelujah. There was a man preaching and he was had a wonderful wonderful ministry. And one day he was driving lost control of his car and he hit a tree. And his wife and his daughter they began they died in the crash. And the man went through a depression. And as he was going through depression, he was walking through the town. And he said, 
said, he kept walking through the town and he was like, God, why did this happen to me? God, why me? Why you took my wife? I served you for many years, God. Why you take my wife? Why you take my baby? And he was walking and he saw his church. And it had just been newly renovated. And when he got up to the church, there was a man who was working on some iron. And he was just banging on the iron. And banging on the iron. And when he got closer, he noticed that the iron was a cross. And he was just banging on the iron. And banging on the iron. And he stopped the man from banging. And he said, so what are you doing? And he said, you see this cross down here? There's a hole up there. And I'm working on this cross down here so that it can fit up there. And I stopped by to ask you, is there anybody in here that God is working on you down here so you can fit up there? Jesus. He's working on me down here Jesus. so I can fit up there. Yes. He's beating me down here so I can fit up there. I don't want to get up there and don't fit. My God. So God, whatever you got to do to me, God, if I got to take a few more losses, God, as long as I fit up there, hey. it's going to be worth it all. Glory. Is there anybody in here? Hallelujah. You know you took some losses. You know that, you think that God been working on you down here. But you pray that God, when the time comes, that I fit up there. Victory shall be mine. Victory shall be mine. Victory, I know it don't look like it right now, but victory shall be mine. Yes. Hallelujah. I, 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 I remember playing in a basketball game. Mm -hmm. And we was down to it. With a minute and 21 seconds left. And we were playing the basketball game, and, and, and the crazy thing is, my team was undefeated. In the same place in Okinawa that I was talking about, we was in Okinawa playing the basketball game, we was undefeated, and we was down. And the folks started talking. They started talking, they were like, oh, it's over. What they gonna do now? It's over. We called timeout, went back there and regrouped and came out, and the next thing you know, we hit one shot, we got to still hit another shot, got to still hit a three-pointer, got another still hit another three-pointer, we got to still hit another shot, and with 10 seconds left, we tied. And we ended up winning the game in regulation. What I'm trying to tell you is, it may look like it's over. It may look like it's over. People may be counting you out. But guess what? On Friday night, it looked like it was over. People was counting them out. He, he, he was on the cross. And people began to count him out. They said it's over for him. They said, one of them even said, if you be the son of God, save us. And he just stayed there. All stressed what? Yeah. Hung his head and he died. My God. And the devil thought he won. Thank you, But guess what? Every Friday got a Sunday coming. Hey. Every Friday got a Sunday coming. And those who don't see nothing on Friday, those who don't see nothing on Saturday, the Bible says weeping may do for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And the Bible said early Sunday morning, he got up, got up. with all power oh, in his hand. I stopped by to tell you, your Sunday is coming. Thank you. They done crucified you, but your Sunday is coming. They done talked about you, your Sunday is coming. They done false accused you, your Sunday is coming. Believe God that your Sunday will get here. The losing season is over. It's over. 
And now we're about to enter into our winning season. Wait, you know, winning season. We're entering into our winning season. Yeah. Anybody want to go with me? Yeah. If you don't know God in the part of your sin, that's the first step to becoming a winner. I'm going to ask you to come. Now is your time. Don't, don't, don't leave here and not know God. That would be the worst travesty of your life. It would be the worst mistake of your life if you miss this moment and not know God. So I'm going to ask you to come. Are you say, I know God, but I've been taking some losses. I'm ready to cross over to my winning season. I'm going to ask you to come.